approaches would you like to see in promoting an ethical approach to global music ensembles? And what kind of role do you think you can play or you would like to play in helping this work? Well, you know, I think that um, my goal from the time that I started here has been uh, to integrate the, you know, all the world music ensembles and the offerings into the curriculum. Okay. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I started, um, again, when I started here in 2008, everything was purely elective mm -hmm. uh, in terms of even, even, you know, just courses. I, I teach a music of Africa course, you know, that was regarded as an elective class. There's, there was, it didn't, it, none of those, none of these classes counted for anything in any, mm -hmm. any degree or major. Um, so I, the, the first step was to develop a world music minor that mm -hmm. way, all the, all the offerings here, the ensembles, the other, the courses, uh, had a direction to go into. So now there's, uh, a world music minor and it's one of, actually, it's one of the only world, uh, it's one of the only minors that you don't have to audition for again. So it's, it gets a, a, a lot of students involved that want to have, take some sort of musical, you know, have a musical minor. Uh, but they don't necessarily have to audition for it. There's not the pressure to audition for it. Um, That's great. Yeah, and then and then slowly over time, it works its way into into the other curriculum. Uh, like now, it's music education. Uh, that's started to become there. Um, I think the hardest, one of the hardest challenges, is uh, how slowly everything takes. You know, there's a. I had proposed. I had put together a course. Uh, course on music of the African diaspora okay. uh, to as a as an option for one of the music history undergraduate courses so that way it was right now they have you know early music history and then from Beethoven to the present and that's what they have to take uh, so this would this would be uh, a third option so that way they have to take two out of three either yeah. early music music from Beethoven to the present or music yeah. of the African diaspora as a history as a history class music history class that way they can change that or that, you know that we're we're opening up the curriculum to to new things uh and it's probably been about two years in the process of getting everything <sighs> up, approved you know it has to go through approvals and has you know so it's you know one of that's the type of thing where uh you know the the university is so resist you know it's supposed to be this you know we're on the cutting edge of research but at mm -hmm. the same point it's it's so resistant to change that uh, it'll be the last one <laughs> to change what it does. That's the thing. It's so resistant to change. So there are people trying to make changes. But then, like you said, it's been two years. Some people have been trying for five years and then give up. And so then from the outside, you think no one is actually trying, but people are. So thank you for that. And thank you for not giving up after two years. Because <laughs> yeah. that's a very long time. And well, this has been interesting talking to you. And I just want to know, is there anything you'd like us to talk about? Is there anything you want to mention? No, I, th I think that this, uh, you know, I was really interested in the study. Uh, I saw the, uh, I saw the, uh, the Zoom that was, was it back in December? Yeah. The meeting, uh, and, and I think it's, uh, it's great that Carlton and you're, you're doing this research. Uh, you know, it's, it's, at some point it's, Yes, it's, it's hard to believe that it's 2022 and we're still, you know, the, the world music, world, the idea of having a world music ensemble is still so foreign uh, in so many places. Yeah, it's almost like it's just the other music and that's it. Right, and it's, uh, and there's, you know, there's, there's little, you know, I, again, I, I, what I've, like I was saying here, you know, it's, I think it's really important that we try to integrate it into the curriculums as much as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really where we'll see change happen replicate yeah. it in a way that does it honor does our students honor and does the longevity of that music making in diverse places around the world honor mm -hmm. um so i think that's a small that's like a very very small first step um and myself personally i, I want to be a learner of this music as long as i can um, I'm very grateful to the instructor of the class that he hasn't kicked me out. <laughs> um, and so I, I want to, I want to be a member and a student of West African drumming and dance. I want to be a learner of, um, a reggae band. I want to be a learner of, of, a um, of a hip hop, you know, I mean, I want, I, I want to have people who are experts and authentic tradition bearers of those musics um, teach me and I want to learn from them. I want to listen to them. I 
I want to be um, the person who doesn't have the answers. Yeah. And I want to learn alongside my students. And so I think if faculty in higher education can humble themselves <laughs> and put yeah. them in, put them in those positions in those situations where we don't always have the answers and that we have to go and step out of our comfort zones and we have to be willing to fail and we have to be willing to embrace the uncertainty of the unknown. Yeah. Um, I think that's another thing that me personally that I can do um, to help my students understand that the world is very large. And there are many, many, many ways of being musical in the world. And the way in which that we've engaged musically up until this point in our lives is just one among many. Mm -hmm. um, and we're doing ourselves and our future students a real disservice if we're not willing um, to step outside of that box. Anybody who wants to teach global music, again, to go to the geographical area, where they, they have interest and they want to study, uh, they should go to the country specific that performs that. They should learn from people, sit with the people, eat with the people. They should participate in everything yeah. and take note of that by observing and asking questions. They should ask questions of, what it is that they are learning or what uh, what drum piece or what dance piece mm -hmm. they are learning, how they are learning it, who perform it, why do they perform it this way, and at what period in the life, whether during the life cycle or is it associated with the political or institutions or hunting or anything. They should have those knowledge and then be able to effectively teach. Yeah. In the past, the mistake the damaged ethnomusicologists in the 1950s did was that they go to the country because they are always from musical point of view. They don't know anything about dance. They go there and then they want to just listen to the drum ensemble. Even that, they record each instrument one by one in relation to the bell. Yeah. They don't even analyze the whole ensemble. For example, Together. if it's Afro, you know, they write, they will record uh, the bell and the uh, Ahache, the bell and the Kaga on the bell. And they don't think of the holistic ensemble approach as to, okay, in an ensemble, how are these, what is the relation between the instrument? That is in itself a problem. And then we have to cite those people. Mm. True. The, the other damage they did was that they forgot that the, the music they are playing, it's based on a particular movement. Now there's this controversy between uh, Agbaja or Achagbeko is 12-8 or is 6-8. Everybody wants to justify it. But they didn't consider the dancer's movement. Yeah. You know, the bell circle is it, it it fits within a particular movement span. They don't know how to dance, so they only took the music component part of it. Yeah. So they have to try. Uh, our generation now is we after everything that we've learned or we don't seem to know where we have the awareness now. We are going back now and to correct some of those things. So. Again, they need, to, they need to understand the music in relationship to the dance and the role of song in totality. It's a holistic art form. So they need to understand that and be able to teach that effectively. That would be uh, my suggestion to them. And what, what role I can play is to probably collaborate with some of the key people. I think we should have uh, a workshop on teaching global music. Yeah. If we do uh, in North America, it should it could be a, a biennial uh, once every two years. We try that if it's going to be hosted by Carlton, 
you know, we know that, okay, there's going to be five instructors, one from Ghana, one from Guinea, or one from whatever, South Africa, whatever ensembles that are very common within. And then, yeah, I believe institutions and departments who are in support of this global music will send candidates there, just as we go to conference, yeah. You know, we go there and then you learn something, ask a question, give workshop. We can arrange it in a way that, you know, people understand. We have a theory of practice. People understand uh, if, if 15 school is working on Ghanaian thing, you know, we have somebody in charge of that. And then we have different sections. Uh, that is a role I can play effectively, be involved in planning that and be willing to share my experience uh, with them, with you know, teaching it uh, so that people have a better understanding because I think people just do that. Uh, I believe some people do it because they know it and other people are doing it um, for teaching or for, you know, to secure the position. Music coming together, you know, as we all know, music is a, a, a universal language. When there is a music, everybody understand it it's straight that this is a music. It's a universal language. Uh, so I just want to see music bringing us together. And then uh, with music, we have, the minute you have a respect for, I mean, uh, a music from the other part, that respect is coming to the whole world. That means you give a respect to the people of that area. So what you do is we should allow music to bring us together. Uh, and those who really understand music, I'm talking about uh, uh, some Westerners who really understand African music and they show big love to it. They bring the whole, the tribe and their tribe together. Let's say uh, uh, Kathy Armstrong. She bring Africa and West together yeah. in a positive way. You see, because she she gave a special respect to what she knew, and she learned it, not depending on the degree alone. She learned it as an African putting everything in her natural computer and bring the two uh, 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 tribes together, the West and then uh, the people who are playing that, that is the Blacks. So she's trying her best to, to be, that, just, that is the type of, I mean, uh, connection I want to happen to everybody, you see? Some people, some of them, they respect you or they, it's, uh, they pretend. Some of them, they pretend to respect, but actually they just want something. When they get it, they don't care about you anymore. That's what is happening here in the West. Yeah. You see, some of them, that is what is happening here in the West. So, I think we should try hard. We have to have a heart to bring, to show to them that the way they pass in those people is not the right way. We try to direct them to the correct way so that we all come together as one person and with one aim and direction. That's what I think we should do. Mm. Um, you've mentioned very essential things. And well, I, pre I, I feel pretty lucky that um, I, I do have um, support and funding to be working on this research project because I think asking questions um, and putting uh, ideas out there is the first step to try to, um, to get some information and to be thinking about change. Um, I think that, you know, if we, if we want to, to, 
expand and look at new ways to do things, um, we have to just be talking. And and I think having conversations is 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 really important. Um, and involving students um, like yourself and others who are are invested in in you know making changes. Um, I think that's you know, and, and I just see myself as. Um, a facilitator in that you know I have some skill sets that may be valuable for that um, and at least I know you know unlike some universities we're not fighting to even have our our ensemble um, valued as much as the other ensembles I, I mean I feel like we're you know definitely on the right path in terms of how we do things um, and the conversations we're having within our department around decolonization but um, but there's just always more work to do so looking looking around um, at other people that are involved in these kinds of um, projects and rethinking and um, expanding repertoire and talking to artists and yeah I, I'm I hopefully we'll have some uh, fruitful results yeah. from that. Yeah I, I'm really excited about what this project is going to start and the conversations it's going to lead to and hopefully it's going to have an effect that it, would, it won't just be conversations yeah. But I'm really excited and I just want to say I really love the work you're doing here. Even just being a part of this, I have learned a lot myself and I'm also ready to help make those changes, you know. So awesome. it's exciting and we're counting on it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the end of my interview. I just want to know if there's anything else you'd like to mention. If not, yeah. yeah. Um no, just uh, just I'm very grateful to everyone who um, has offered their time and experience and they're unknowing, you know, like none of us really know what the right answer and re what the right path is. And of course, mm -hmm. we're working on the shoulders of people who came before us. Right. Um, this is not a new question. This question has come up before. I think there's just an urgency around this time because of things that are happening socially around the world um i think there's a real urgency but it is a bit of a it's a question that's been going on for a couple of decades if not a few decades um with people who are also running these kinds of ensembles and i think as educators we just have to keep um examining ourselves and and our methods and and um looking out for ways to sort of um dismantle like the barriers that that surround um or the kind of you know the the structure of of a post-secondary institution because it it does prevent more um kind of flow between community and culture and uh, i think that's something that would be really helpful if we can uh, move towards that 